Welcome to the Space Bar Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Casey. I'm a digital commerce consultant here at Space48. Um, and I'm joined today by Tom Robertshaw, who is the Innovation Director at Space48. How are you doing, Tom? Doing very well. How about yourself? Very good, thank you. Uh, today, we're going to be talking all about big commerce apps. So uh, we've delved into the world of big commerce apps. We've been working with the big commerce platform for a couple of years now. Um, and Tom, you're leading this project internally. So, you know, best person to talk to about it. Yeah. Talk about what we've been getting on with. Some I'd be of the disappointed if I didn't get the invite. Yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't have been able to hold a full episode together without, without you. But yeah, um, I think um, what we want to do today really is just talk about what you've been getting up to, some of the challenges that you've been facing, you know, what have we learned through the process and, and how we approached it. Um, cause we are, you know, we've, we've got our first app out there in, in the market, which we'll touch on a little bit later, uh, which is really exciting. Obviously it's a, it's a kind of a big moment for us to actually get one out there. Um, and yeah, we want to talk about that entire process, you know, for our kind of big commerce clients and also for any other app developers and people that are out there in the market trying to, you know, trying to create apps for big commerce. So, um, should we start out with a quite a broad question? You know, why, why big commerce apps? Sure thing. Um, I think I think that it immediately is two questions: is why big commerce, and then then why apps. Um, there's certainly the the Space Forty Eight view, but there's also the journey that I'm like personally on as well. Um, so as many of you will have know, if you've listened in the past, like I come from a, a background of of agency and e-commerce life for about a decade, um, and a large portion of that was with Magento. Um, but as sort of like time times change, um, and um, kind of, as I say, I've I've been on a journey, um, and over the last couple of years, looking at other e-commerce platforms, um, so the likes of Shopware, um, I've had experience with Shopify as as well. Um, I'm recognizing the, the opportunity with big commerce as it focuses more on sort of the the mid market to, to enterprise um, size merchants, um, sort of replacing what Magento one used to be used to be targeted targeted at um, and it's a very good replacement for for that um with also the, the move towards SaaS, like I've, uh, I've, I've had a, a decade worth of pains um, managing infrastructure and managing um, a, a, like servers and installation of, of magento um, um getting a little older i'd want to have to <laughs> worry about uh, less things that have been uh, solved problems um so moving towards like the open SaaS approach that become us push forward where you know the core e-commerce um, functionality is taken care of, but you still have the freedom to modify kind of the the commerce experience as much as you like, um, and and modify the way that the e-commerce platform works and how it integrates into you know, the rest of your IT infrastructure. Um, that really appealed appealed to me. Uh, I don't have to um, get the, the calls at ten o'clock at night that the, the website's got gone down, um, and I don't need to, we don't need to worry about sysadmins. Um, so that's kind of big commerce, and it's it's both a, a personal, as I say, a personal choice as, as well as makes sense for for, for the company. Um, the app side of it is again having been in the agency agency world uh, and built kind of many many e commerce websites. Now um, it was I was also looking for a new challenge. Um, There's a little bit of a running joke internally that um, every week I have a new job title. Um, having kind of gone from running an agency to being an e-commerce consultant to being excited uh, with with Nick Jones over the last year moving into the technical director role um, within space. Um, I joined him as head of engineering and was excited to get closer to the technology again. Um, but I also recognize it towards kind of the end of last year that um, I, you know, I was looking for a slightly larger challenge. And while we have an exciting challenges going on in terms of growing the team, like we're growing at a fantastic rate and that's um, an incredible journey. It wasn't something that I felt like particularly um, um, drawn to. Um, it, it's exciting to see going on, but I, that's not kind of what I'm passionate about. Um, and I, I have had a niche, uh, as it's been described, for products and um, worked in the Magento space and released Magento extensions. Um, and so it seemed like the stars were aligning. There was a good opportunity um, to work in the e-commerce app space, um, providing additional pieces of functionality to either help merchants save time um, or kind of ultimately earn more, more revenue from, from their customers. Um, and that's something that I was really passionate about. Um, it's, it's probably fair to say that it's exciting that it's almost like a small um, startup within a business as well. Um, so I get the, the joy of um, coding as well as worrying about what's the kind of go-to-market strategy and, uh, and and everything in between. 
It's like a full 360 role, really, isn't it, as well? You know, you've got essentially, like you said, running it as a startup, almost like a product startup business, right? Yeah, right now it's it's very scrappy. So, um, uh, and scrappy. Say, yeah. <laughs> so getting back into into code, I'm sure if you know, if this is successful, a mark of, mark of success is that we'll have other developers uh, that are on the team that are uh, are looking forward to throwing away my code. Yeah, I mean a lot of the uh, a lot of the things that I've I've learned recently, obviously from from finding out about what you've been getting on with and and what we did on the hack day, etc. I think you know there's clearly a lot of enthusiasm behind this within the agency because. We're essentially finding all the common problems that we have with clients and we're trying to solve them. And I think the big commerce, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the big commerce app ecosystem is probably not as advanced as the extension ecosystem in Magento or the app ecosystem in Shopify. I don't know if you agree, but um, it's kind of just a feeling that I've got from the clients that I've worked with and the projects that I've been on. Yeah, I, I would think that's fair, fair to say. Um, they have a lot of the, the big name kind of brands and, um, yeah. and and integrators out there, but there's not much um, kind of in terms of sm smaller players that you might expect to expect to see. Certainly, if if you're familiar with with other markets. And I, I've heard you describe your kind of main mission here being um, that you want to be everyone's favorite second <laughs> second favorite app developer. Is that is that is that an, an appropriate? Um, title that that you've you know you've really worked hard in your entire career to work towards <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a pinnacle that i'm aiming for um it, it's really come out of the um I, i'm not looking to compete with our with our partners obviously as an agency we have many tech partners there's a lot of amazing technology out there for yeah. e-commerce merchants now um but it's also recognizing that while we, you know, as an agency, we're always going to recommend the best of breed, whether that's Nosto from a um, kind of personalization point of view or Clevu from a, a search point of view. We're always going to recommend those, um, but every merchant has a budget, um, and you know they can't afford to have best of breed in every single area. They, they certainly wouldn't have the time to to manage that unless you're a large a large business and kind of get the most out of every platform. Um, so this is just uh, like recognizing that there's an opportunity that um, I guess it yeah in, in the in the market to have some slightly not as good options. <laughs> um, and obviously I want to create high quality um, products and create things that are useful. Um, but it, I guess it's a little bit disruptive in the sense that these products are always going to be um, increasing the amount of functionality they have um, and kind of going up market with, with their customers. Uh, and so, you know, the rest of the merchants need need something that just kind of gets the job done, increases, um, adds functionality compared to maybe the the core platform, and, you know, fill some fill some gaps there, but is sort of a, an in between. So yes, it doesn't sound necessarily very um, um, audacious in that respect, but I feel like fr from working in particularly the Magento ecosystem in the past, like projects don't go live without these kind of providers, um, and they're incredibly valuable to to the, the ecosystem, and that's kind of this the space that I want to work in, and and maybe something you know amazing um, uh, will will come out of it in the sense of we find something that. It could spin out into its own product, but um, I don't. That's not kind of. You know, that's that's something that could happen down the down the line. Right now, it's 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 recognizing there's a, as you describe it, there's a like space and an opportunity in the market, um, and I want to kind of help people and help the the, the big commerce ecosystem um, along the way. I think during the process, you've obviously also you've done a lot of research into like how the apps are made, you know, like how big commerce works, like really getting to grips with how big commerce works, whether that's big design or you know, the other aspects, you know, like page builder or or anything mm -hmm. else, but it's already impacted some of our clients and how we're approaching implementation for existing clients, right? So not not necessarily the app output of, of what we're doing. Obviously, we've only just launched our first app, but I think the learnings that you've been doing, you know, with the page builder, with the widgets and a couple of other things as well, it's enabled us to actually add value to, to existing big commerce projects or existing big commerce retained clients where... Mm -hmm. You know, we can take the learnings that you've been doing, you know, going in this journey to then implement into um, existing projects, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess it's, I'm working on the app side and there's teams that are working on kind of um, building the stores themselves. But, you know, ultimately we've, we've got like this mini big commerce practice within within the company and we're, we're sharing knowledge so that um, I learn about kind of their pain points and things that I might be able to to solve. Like when we find, you know, every project that comes across our doorstep is asking for a certain feature. That's good guidance for me. Um, but also anything that, that, that I learn from kind of as you say, in the weeds with e-commerce APIs and, and apps, what can I learn and, and throw back to, towards towards project teams? And that all adds to you know our 
shared confluence that we have in terms of sh uh, sharing information about how big commerce works um, and what you can what you can do with it what's the um obviously i'm, I'm not a developer as you know um when when we're looking at how, like how do you approach actually building an app you know what what's the process what's the a very high level obviously um in terms of the audience that are listening to this, you know, it's probably more like e-commerce managers, people who work in e-commerce, but there will be some devs. But at a very high level, you know, how, how are you going about building the actual apps themselves? Yeah, I mean, um, again, at very high level, it's there's not anything very special with it it's an app in this sense is just a website um the difference with it being a big commerce app is that um it's listed on the big commerce marketplace the, the their app store um and it there's a certain level of expectation um that uh, in terms of features that you would have to provide um the main one being um su supporting login so that you can click a button and it, it immediately gets installed on your store What's happening under the hood there is is essentially just a, an authentication process, so that um, kind of my website gets an API key, so that I can make BigCommerce requests. And there's there's not much more to it than than that. Um, on BigCommerce's side, it means that when you're uh, when you, once you've installed an app in the admin area, you'll get a, a nice little icon um, and a, a link to the app that then um, opens within your BigCommerce admin. Um, so so you, you don't actually have to kind of go to the website directly or anything. It's it's um, kind of within your your BigCommerce admin area. But that everything else is then kind of up, up to me in terms of um, kind of billing or and adding the functionality and all the, all the business logic as you would expect um, it's kind of just like any other website um, but that that big commerce app component is just the authentication so you don't have to worry about um, providing API keys or anything like that um, and once you've uninstalled it um, I you know the app uh, can no longer make requests right okay so yeah so it's very very similar to how we might work on other platforms or in more traditional development kind of life cycles, there isn't anything like particularly special apart from maybe following guidelines and, and trying to get things through the app store, et cetera. You're like almost following a different QA process and, and, and feedback from big commerce, the product team themselves, right? Yes. So there is um, a, a approval process that you have to go through once you submit an app. Um, obviously, once they, they install it, um, we'll, you have to provide a test plan. So they'll go through that um, and give you give you feedback um, uh, and legitimize it somewhat. So we obviously when 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 you've been developing the app and, and when you've been working in and not just the this, this singular app that we've obviously got live now and, and more to come, but when you've been developing ideas, I know we've been discussing some of the ideas around you know, what could you, what future opportunities are there? And, you know, there's going to be some, some, you know, other things that we bring out into the market. Um, one of the things that you ran internally, which I found amazing because it was my first one, uh, was the hack day. Um, so do you want to, do you want to talk us through how, what, how we did that? And also what was that amazing piece of software that we used that basically turned it into a, a video game while we were, while we were talking about different subjects, because that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, that was gather.room. Um, so it, it reminded me of like the Pokemon style um, universe where yeah, it's your, your Zoom, but you're, a, you're a, a character in this universe and you get to walk into different rooms and um, um, it's almost like you have the Zoom breakout rooms so that people can initially just have a have a call. Uh, and we started off just all, all in the conference room on a call, um, but then you can break out into separate offices, um, move between them um, and, and kind of chip into conversations. Um, so yeah, it, was, it made it a lot of fun. The feedback was, was positive so i think we'll use it for other sort of special events um uh, like that uh, i think people had a lot of fun with it um, um but they, the hack day itself what 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 did what did you because it because it was was actually just focused on a sp quite a specific subject matter wasn't it what you know what was that what did we look to get out of it and what, what do you think we actually came away from because i think we came away from it with quite a lot right Yes, yeah. So a bit of a bit of context is that um, while it's just me working full time on this initiative right now, um, you know, we're going through a process as we've kind of entered into the new financial year of, of setting company objectives, um, and we've wanted to go about that this year as um, being kind of more bottom up than than ever. So that as a leadership team, we're sort of setting the direction we want to go in, um, but then allowing people to, to sort of vote with their feet in terms of where they want to get involved and how they want to get involved, and so. You know, with big commerce apps and this initiative being you know, an objective of, of its own, um, we let people kind of move towards this, and we now we have a, a big commerce apps team. Um, but obviously, if they're not working full time, it's more of a part time contribution. Um, 
for some that's you know very kind of directed so when it's you know people like yourself paul the go to market strategy we're going to have ad hoc calls um but for developers we wanted to um, have another way of of getting involved and many are as you say, working with the e-commerce platform already, but this was a great opportunity to uh, give them exposure to creating a e-commerce app um, that they then might be able to work on um, in sort of downtime between projects, um, opportunities for like other other projects that might come up in terms of um, e-commerce app builds for other integration partners. Um, so it felt like a really good opportunity to kind of do this uh, sort of initial onboarding and exposure to to e-commerce um, apps. So. It's been a, a long time since I run a hack day, um, and, and certainly my first remote one. So that's why we we tried out that that um, gather room as a as a tool uh, for getting started, um, and then we set the uh, a topic uh, and specifically around uh, page builder because it's it's something that the teams uh, are really excited uh, with the developments of, um, of page builder in, in big commerce for managing um, content without having to sort of go outside of the platform, um, and so they're finding it critical to. Kind of allowing merchants to customize their page um but it's still very early days uh, for for page build i think it was released uh, first version last year um but it's uh, extendable so you can add uh, more different kind of widget types uh, as they call them so out of the box you might have like a carousel that you can kind of drop in or product galleries and things like that um you can create custom ones and so Project teams are already doing that as part of their builds, but it seemed like a great opportunity to sort of merge the two um, and maybe we can look at building an app um, that will allow a merchant to kind of um, a, a install uh, and add uh, additional widget types. So um, the things that we were looking into were th things like uh, store locators, uh, USP banners, um, or even like custom layouts. So if you've got like a sp specific um, design of, of a content block, um, yeah. so we were d experimenting with, with grids, so you can have multiple columns of text and maybe a, a call out um, hero image and different layouts that you sort of pre-designed for you. Um, that's you know useful for our as I said before like for our projects where we've we've got a, des um, a design system al already and so we just want to allow the merchant to consume it um, but we figured that there's an opportunity there in in the big commerce um, uh, app space as well so so yeah it was you know there's only so much you can get done in a day but it felt um, you know it felt great to do something different given you know the last the last year um, anyway um, so that that was fun um, and yeah more more to come hopefully. Yeah, and obviously, I think a lot of the the features that come out of Page Builder are, are almost, um, you know, in, in, like because there's a lot of CMSs out there. We work with a couple of different CMSs on Big Commerce, haven't we? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we use Shogun, Styler, and and maybe Contentful. I think they're probably some of the key ones that we've used. But um, every CMS has its limitation, and and it's you know the actual core Page Builder in BC, you can do a lot, can't you? I think it's more just stretching it to its maximum capabilities, and I know they've done some recent updates on their side, so it'd be interesting to see how that one progresses. But I know from working with the clients that I work with, you know, the projects that I'm working on currently with the big commerce clients, um, you know, the replatform clients about what you can actually do in the Page Builder and the widgets that we can create do actually create a lot of freedom, flexibility for that, like, good editorial content. Mm -hmm. You know, not use standard e-commerce layouts, which everyone's trying to move away from because it's all very like everything looks like boxes in a, <laughs> like a square responsive grid. Uh, so we need to kind of break that and, and maybe, you know, try some more creative layouts for, for merchants. But yeah, no, it was, it was a fascinating day. Obviously, as usual, I, I only really contributed words um, and a few bad jokes but um yeah the um it was good it was good to be a part of that actually and i definitely want to be involved in the next one um, sorry i just i just felt like a project manager dipping into the the, the team calls and hey how you doing <laughs> need any help yeah um you do realize it's nearly four o'clock and you've not submitted your code yet <laughs> right. yeah just to, just a reminder <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was really like passive aggressive slack messages that actually i'm really sweating over here so i really need to get something <laughs> up um yeah, so uh, actually, like, let's talk about the app that we got out in the market because obviously, you know, that's that's a big step forward. I know you did try and release one initially, and that didn't quite work out. Don't know if you want to talk about it, but um, sure, <laughs> yeah, but, it's um, a learning curve, right? Yeah, the first first one I tried was for. Um, it, it, I guess it was more of a, an experiment initially, but trying to. Um, 
do page transitions, so speed up um, page loads. There's a, some web technology um, that allows you to, to preload the next page um, if you know what it's going to be. And so I thought, well, well let's experiment with that. Um, but unfortunately, I, I kind of got, got so far and kind of reached some limitations that meant from a technical point of view, it wasn't going to work out. So yeah, luckily it was only a, um, a week or so of worth of time, but it was a case of like, oh, this is what my first app's going to be. And then it's like, oh, okay, it didn't work. Um, so, so yeah, it was a, a learning experience. We always tell people to, um, uh, from a, a project perspective, to to kind of look at the high risk areas first. And um, there's certainly been times where I've I've checked myself in this process already where I probably didn't follow my own advice. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to learn when you make your own mistakes. Well, we've we've eventually got there, though, haven't we? And obviously, automated categories, um, it, the automated categories app by Space Forty Eight in the app store available <laughs> today. Um, Talk us through it. Talk us through the thought process about you know why that app, and then also what what does the actual app do, and you know what what could the future look like in terms of that specific app, you know for what how you see it working. Yeah, sure. I mean, kind of moving on for that the, the first failed experiment, um, we generated a like a list of different ideas. Obviously, with, with um, many of the team working in the space for a long time, there's there's so many different uh, directions we could go in. Um, and that's one of the reasons why it's so exciting. I, I hope we can kind of I hope we can create an app for for all of them. Um, but but practically speaking, it was a case of we got to pick we got to pick one um, to to be our, to be our first. Um, and we wanted to pick one that was going to be obviously it's going to be useful to to merchants. It's going to provide value. But we also recognise that. The first app is is likely to take the longest because you know you're doing everything for the first time. Um, it's going to be an awful lot of learning, so we don't want to kind of bite off more than we can chew. So we picked an app that was useful in in the functionality it provides, but not too large. It was going to take us um, you know, twelve months to get there. So automated categories um, we we chose because in BigCommerce, when you assign products to categories, you can either do it when you're editing a product um, and they've got a sort of bulk edit view where you can edit multiple products at once and add them to a to categories, or you can do it by import and export. Um, I'm familiar with with other platforms that provide you a way of defining rules for your categories. So you can say, um, maybe you have a sale category and say, I want any product that is on sale um, or has a sale price to be in the sale category, and meaning that you you never have to sort of make a mistake when when you come to the end of a sale period or miss a product um, uh, and just you know set it and forget it. Um, so you can do that with sale categories and a new in category based on date created, um, brand categories. Um, uh, and I've already seen people who kind of do it based on SKU formats and kind of na um, naming conventions of products and things like that. Um, and so that that seemed like a, a great opportunity to provide provide value in terms of of saving merchants time um, while it was also you know uh, reasonably small in terms of uh, scope yeah so it's always good to get the first one actually out there in the marketplace and you know do all the things that we need to do as a as like a, an app provider you know not just an agency but an app provider to actually get one over the line get it out there um, hopefully obviously you know going learning through the process and going through the kind of pain barrier and, and i think it's a it's a it's a good app good time saving app it's one of those things that uh, for, for merchants that go into big commerce for the first time they, you know they might find quite challenging if they've got particularly a lot of SKUs or you know a lot of variations in, in the product so it will actually be you know quite a good time saver um you, what would you say you know are the the kind of main learnings that you, you know that you've had of actually getting one out there now, you know, and, and the, the things that you've learned through the process, just because it's been, I don't know, when did you start? It was like back, was it back in the 2020 or was it partway through yeah, 2020? Yeah, that's, that's, when, that's when the new role started. Um, I think this app started January 1st, so as we came back from from the new, from the new year is when I um, started the first app. So yeah, it's taken a, a little time um, to, get it, to get it live. There's, as you say, there's things around um, the app building process, um, learnings, um, whether it be, Writing terms and conditions and privacy policy, all you know, all the things I was really looking forward to. Um, kind of getting started, this I wasn't even contemplating having to do that. Um, um, as coming up to this week, where we we've released it in terms of a free trial, but now I'm kind of going into into billing. So um, not only do how do we want to kind of manage uh, subscriptions and take payment, um, but um, 
you know, what tax rates do we need to charge and things like that. And so that's meeting with the finance director t- tomorrow to see if I've done it right. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, there's lots of things, um, you know, we, we might talk about that one piece of functionality, um, but there's lots of things around that that are needed in order to, to get live and, you know, the approval process and knowing what makes a, makes a good app and iterating on, on the feedback that the big commerce team gave you. Um, so I guess there's learnings, uh, so many learnings already in terms of what it takes to, to launch an app. Um, the yeah. learning of uh, doing the high risk things first before you've you spent three days um, building all the the skeleton to realize that that's not going to be worth it. Um, I think the the other learning for me is we've actually started a second app uh, for again in, in a similar space in terms of managing categories, um, but for visual merchandising. So again, you can um, order products by like setting a sort order on on each one, but we wanted to provide a nicer interface to merchants to be able to do that. So you can drag and drop and reorder products. So again, something we see is kind of very valuable uh, for, for other pl- platforms and we wanted to bring it to, to BigCommerce. Uh, that one isn't live yet, but I think the learning there is that I got excited about it. And uh, I'll admit, I kind of, once I got an MVP of the first product and the automated categories, I, I moved very quickly onto, onto this one. Um, then I recognized it was, it was a bit of a distraction, um, for, for, for too long. I kind of moved onto it because I had a, a, a customer that's already said that, you know, they'll, they'll pay for it. Um, so that's obviously a starting a new business. That's very exciting when you've got someone that says they'll actually give you money for something you build. Um, but I, I feel like in retrospect, um, I moved too quickly onto the second app, um, uh, when I could have iterated a bit, uh, a bit faster on the fir- uh, first app, um, yeah. implemented billing earlier, kind of get, get revenue a bit quicker. So I guess I'm, I'm fortunate enough that I kind of can make that mistake when you're working within a larger business. Um, but it's, it's only one that I've reflected on already that um, I could have could have done it better if I'd, I'd focused on the first, um, gone further with it, and then moved to, to the second app. But yeah, now, now I'm in the position that we have one app live, um, second that is in sort of a private beta, um, and uh, I've now gone back to the, f- the first app to, um, to, to iterate on it and, and add billing. It's good because you've been documenting the journey as you've been going along, haven't you? So you've got the Space 48 apps YouTube channel where you're literally posting videos and being real. like, I'll be honest with you, I'm surprised how much you're actually giving away uh, on, you know, on some of the videos that you've done. So you're giving away a lot of information in there. And and obviously there's a lot of learnings that, you know, that, that you're posting almost not real time, but, you know, week by week or, or whatever. So documenting the journey, I think, is brilliant, you know, and it's it's great for someone to to kind of pick up that thread and and to to see what the journey is because it's obviously going to continue. Um, just on that note, you know, what what do you see the kind of future being within you know the big commerce app space for for Space Forty Eight? Well, I, I guess I'm biased, but I I feel like it's got a bright bright future. Um, I'm really excited about the the platform. I feel like it's um, resonating with 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 uh, the the kind of the set of merchants that we're expecting it to resonate with. Um, and you know, since we've started working with it, we're seeing more and more brands move to it. So I'm feeling really really positive about the platform. And then from a, an apps perspective, like you say, there's there's so many opportunities in terms of the the space right now. Um, I feel like. Uh, I can't get apps out quick enough. Um, um, in terms of Space Forty Eight, I really hope that you know we've got a set of objectives that we've we've set internally together, um, uh, and I think I think we set for five paid apps um, by the end of this financial year, which is you know, <laughs> given that we've you know got one, but it feels like there's a, there is an awful long way to go. Um, but if you know if this is successful, we'll have. Um, Built a library of big commerce apps that people can just go to and and just kind of pick and pick and choose from, or maybe even have a subscription to all of them, um, uh, and so that you know that you know if you're starting a new big commerce project, um, you can go to the Space Forty Eight apps um, and have you know um, a, a whole load of features um, that you can rely on. They're going to be compatible with each other um, um, and sort of provide that extra extra foundation level on top of the the core platform, um, as well as then the the team to support that. You know this. I'm not expecting this to be um, by my um, just me for for and by myself for the the, the long term. Um, certainly, as we increase the amount of apps, I'm not going to be able to support them as as well as creating new new versions. So, you know, success um, and what that looks like will be having a, a team around me, whether it be from a customer support perspective um, as well as additional developers for full time um, that maybe are maybe the 
working full time on on new apps and new new features, yeah. um, or maybe a portion of their time is on uh, building official apps for um, third parties that want to have uh, a big commerce integration, and, and we can kind of reuse our expertise and uh, and proficiencies in, in building um, um, apps for, for for other people as well. Is is a potential route of you know it's always difficult blending a product with service, but that that might be one route that we that we go. Good. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that you can come back on the podcast in, the, in a couple of weeks' time, um, you know, or maybe even a couple of months to give you a bit more breathing space. But um, I think it'd be really good to just keep capturing the journey, you know, seeing how you're getting on, seeing what's next. Um, and if people want to kind of find out what's going on, is it probably best to find you on LinkedIn in terms of, you know, updates on, on, on progress, et cetera? Yeah, uh, LinkedIn um, or publisher on Twitter, um, and the Space Forty Eight website has um, all of updates in our in our blog as well. I post all the sort of major major milestones um, in the Big Commerce Apps blog too. Cool. Well, um, yeah, thanks very much, Tom. I think that was really good. A good run through for for kind of anybody that that isn't aware and wants to kind of catch up on, on where we're up to. So, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, I'll just end on obviously. Um, thanks for, thanks a lot for listening to the podcast. We're obviously trying to grow as, as many people as we can in the audience for, for our kind of e-commerce content ongoing. So, you know, make sure that you subscribe, make sure you leave a review, share it with your friends, and then hopefully, you know, we can grow the community around this podcast. So yeah, thanks Tom. And uh, we'll speak to you soon.